Let's take a look at an example to see how to apply the CAPM. So we've got a portfolio. We've got two stocks in there, Capital Bread and Mountain Drink. Capital Bread has a beta of 1.35, standard deviation of returns of 25%, and the value of our holdings is 18000 Mountain Drink, on the other hand, beta of 0 0.70, standard deviation of returns of 35%, and we only hold $12,000 worth of this. The expected return on the market is 14%, and the risk-free rate is 2%. So what is the expected return of capital bread? So let's just go ahead and apply the CAPM. It's, so we would get 2% if there was no risk at all. We would get 2% if there was no risk at all. But if there was an average amount of risk, we would get an extra 12%. Why? Because the expected return on the market is 14, risk-free rate is 2, so if you took out an average amount of systematic risk that associated with the market, you would get 12 percentage points extra above and beyond the 2%. That's why it's 14. But Capital Bread doesn't have an average amount of risk. Capital Bread has a beta of 1.35, so it has 135% of the average amount of systematic risk. So guess what? Its risk premium should be 135% of what a stock would get if it had an average amount of risk. So that's 1.35 times 0.12. So the risk premium on capital bread is 16.2 percentage points. That's equal to that product. If it had no risk, it would get 2%. So what is the expected return for capital bread? 18.2%. How about Mountain Drink? Same approach. If Mountain Drink had no risk, it would get 2% as an expected return. If it had an average amount, it would get an extra 12%. But it doesn't have an average amount. It has a beta of 0.7, so it only has 70%. Its level of risk is 70% of what an average risk stock would have with regard to systematic risk. So it only gets 70% of the premium that an average stock would get. So that's, you know, 0.7 times 0.12, which is an extra 8.4 percentage points. Two if there was no risk, 8.4 percentage points more because there's 70% beta 0.7. Therefore, Mountain Drink has an expected return of 10.4%. Now there's something really interesting in this example, and that is that, I'm going to get a different color going here, that the standard deviation of returns for capital bread is actually less than Mountain Drink. So capital bread's return bounce around like that, Mountain Drink's bounce around like that, but what matters is how much of that volatility is due to systematic risk, because you can't diversify that away. Capital Bread has more systematic risk. More of its bouncing around is due to the macroeconomic news that we've talked about, the way we've modeled it. And so as a result, even though its total risk is less, what matters is its systematic risk, and that's why Capital Bread has a higher expected return. All right, so let's look at the portfolio. We have 18000 in capital. I'm going to go back to yellow here. We have $18,000 in capital bread and 12000 in mountain drink, so that adds up to 30. So 18 of our 30s in capital bread, 12 of our 30s in mountain drink. What is the portfolio expected return? Well, there's two ways we can approach this. The first is the expected, you know, using the cap M, or actually call it the, they all use the cap M. So, the idea here is the portfolio approach, which involves taking a weighted average of the expected returns of Capital Bread and Mountain Drink. So previously we found using the cap that Capital Bread has an expected return of 18.2, that Mountain Drink has an expected return of 10.4. We know that cap Capital Bread has... 18 of the 30,000 of our portfolios in Capital Bread, 12 of the 30s in Mountain Drink. And we take a weighted average, we see that the expected return on the portfolio is 15.08%. If 18 
thirtieths of our portfolio has an expected return of 0.182. 12 thirtieths has an expected return of 0.104. The whole thing is at 15.08%. Second approach is to take a weighted average of the two betas to figure out what the beta of the portfolio is and then apply the cap at. So if 18 of our 30 is in capital bread with a beta of 1.35 and 12 thirtieths is in mountain drink at 0.7, our portfolio has a beta of 1.09. Cap M, 2% if there's no risk an extra 12 percentage points if there's an average amount of risk, but our portfolio doesn't have an average amount of risk. It has 109 percent of the average, so you get 109 percent of the premium, which is 13.08 percent, plus the two you get for taking on no risk, 15.08. So it doesn't matter which way you approach it. One way is use the cap M and then take a weighted average, or take a weighted average of the betas and then use the cap M. And this is a helpful reference. The, you know you know the expected return of the market is 14. The risk-free rate is 12. We solve that the expected return for capital bread is 18.2. Mountain drink is 10.4. And our portfolio is 15.08. What about the risk premiums? No matter what, don't get caught up in things. The risk premium is always the expected return minus the risk-free rate. So the market premium the market risk premium, risk premium for the market is just the expected return for the market, which is 14, minus risk free rate, which is 12. The risk free rate, the risk premium for capital bread is just 18.2 minus 2 is 16.2. Risk premium for mountain drink, 10.4 minus 2 is 8.4. Risk premium for the portfolio is the 15.08 minus 2 is 13.08. So again, there's nothing fancy or complicated. It's just the expected return minus the risk free rate. You can always get the risk premium also as beta times the market premium. So we've established that at 14 minus 2, the market premium is 12%. I just did that in yellow, but we did it right here too. So the risk premium for the market is 1 times 12%. Capital bread, 1.35, so it's 135% of 12%, get you 16.2. Mountain drink, 70% of 12% is 8.4, and our portfolio, 1.09, 109% of 12 is 13.08. So this is a little bit of a summary slide. Sometimes students get a little confused about the risk premium and the market premium and the risk premium for a particular stock or portfolio. So hopefully this helps clarify things a little bit as far as just remembering it's always the expected return minus the risk-free rate. You can also compute it as beta for the particular asset or portfolio times the market premium, which is how much you get if there's an average amount of systematic risk, but taking into account how much systematic risk there actually is for the particular thing that you're trying to figure out the risk premium for.